So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you, Dr. Raju and Team Delhi for this invitation. I have an interesting uh, case to be discussed. It's a massive three tendon irreparable rotator cuff tear in a patient who is having a weight bearing shoulder, meaning the patient takes the entire weight of her body on her shoulders since her uh, birth. So <clears throat> this is a case history. It's a 42 year old lady who has complete paraplegia secondary to a post polio paralysis. She presents with severe pain and weakness in her right shoulder, which is of insidious onset. There is no such traumatic history per se. She is an upper limb ambulator since birth and depends entirely on taking the entire body weight on both her shoulders for all her activities of daily living. In fact, she is socioeconomically very challenged and runs a very small grocery store for handicapped people and therefore has to rely on her shoulder to hand out objects to her customers. Since the weakening of her shoulder, her livelihood has got affected and she is completely dependent on others. What was very heart wrenching is when she presented, she said, that even for her toilet activities, she has to be lifted for a child and therefore in the night, she was devastated because she had to depend even for her basic toilet activities. There was no history of trauma. So we are dealing with a lady who is having a significant demand on her shoulder, socioeconomically challenged and having very uh, high uh, desire and need for her shoulder to function for these uh, daily activities. On examination, her passive ranges were full. She had her active forward flexion to about 100 degrees but with severe pain and a lot of compensation and on repeated motion as expected she was developing pseudo paralysis in the sense she couldn't get her up, up to even 90 degrees. Her external rotation lag sign was positive, her horn blower was negative, her belly press was positive. So we all know what to expect. That's her forward flexion. So with a lot of compensation she gets it just to about 100 or so. That's her she flexes her wrist, she cannot get it up, that's her belly press. She abducts her shoulder, she is able to get it into external rotation, but with a lot of, she does have active external rotation in abduction, which tells her that her teres, which tells her that her teres manner is fine. So, we all accept that this is a very challenging situation. So, the first investigation, obviously her shoulder AP, true AP x-ray. We can show there are some, we can see that there are some adaptive changes. There is a little bit of osteophyte kind of development in the inferior humeral head. There is a significant reduction in the acromohumeral distance, although there is no acetabularization. These are her MRI images. That's her massive retracted supraspinatus tear, massive retracted infraspinatus tear. There is an intact teres minor. Those are her actual images. That's her Lafosse type 3 retracted subscapularis tear, that's her significantly subluxed biceps tendon. What I want you to notice is that the longer the biceps appears to be thick, uh, uh, bulky. That is showing the fact that the tear is all the way uh, in involving the entire upper two thirds. That's her Y view and uh, you can see that the significant muscle wasting, advanced fatty infiltration, there is teres, teres minor hypertrophy, so the supra infra don't seem to be at all worth <coughs> trying to even uh, repair. The subscap is again getting into the uh, fatty infiltration stage 3. So with this, uh, just a simple question because I don't have the ARS, so just a show of hands. Has anybody encountered exactly this situation in their practices? So the seniors and uh, very few people have encountered this, so it's going to be interesting for the people who haven't and obviously for the purpose of the discussion. So these are the options obviously which we have to discuss, whether there is a chance of partial cuff repair in these grade 3, 4 fatty infiltrated patients. Is SCR going to work but what about the graft, she is a paralytic patient, there is her, her limbs are very very thin, you are not going to get a good autograft at all. Can we use the biceps as an SCR, well that is the only probable structure which is working there but unfortunately that is also subluxed, so can we use that, any salvage procedure or for pain relief but obviously function is not going to come, reverse in such a young patient. So all these are the options but they are none of them are good options. So a show of hands who would do a partial cuff repair, none, SCR, so Dr. Dinshaw SCR and another hand there, anybody would do a biceps as an SCR. One and three, both as an option. So basically we are looking at SCR. 
however the biceps is sublux so we need to look at into the shoulder to understand whether it is actually a viable structure to be used as an scr reverse shoulder anybody any other suggestions so as of now we are looking at biceps or autograft options to uh, or because obviously the allograft option is out for her she is socially economically challenged and autograft is going to be an issue because her thighs are literally so much but her her job will get significantly affected correct so therefore i didn't uh, include fusion because when you talk to her you just want to make sure she lives her basic life and lives uh, earns her basic uh, earning so this was the uh, article that i went through and this mentions about using the biceps as a dynamic humeral head depressor and i felt that this could be a viable option for her so i kept this in mind i'm going to discuss the details of this as the case progresses there's a 2018 article which talks about the biceps as a static humeral head depressor so what i want to bring to notice in this presentation is that how you can use biceps not as an scr but as a dynamic or a static humeral head depressor and whether it works and about a three year follow up so we entered a shoulder this is the diagnostic round it's a right shoulder viewing from the posterior portal you can see the acromion right away completely bald humeral head nothing in the in the name of any supra or infra a significantly subluxed biceps right there no subscap is seen just the capsule even the posterior cuff is flimsy so probably a nightmarish situation so i have had the experience of repairing one of uh, the shoulders like this but this was not such a case so the first thing that i did was to try and repair the subscap we all agree that until the anterior force couple is restored none of our humeral head depressor uh, creating surgeries are going to help so this is how i went about it a 360 degree release we all know about three sided release but here i really had to release it all around so that's the comma sign that's the release of the adhesions between the subscap and the glenoid that's the coracohumeral lig ligament release and the coracoid under the coracoid release and we need to remember that the biceps is sublux so it's always coming in the way and there is a fear of damaging that and that's my only structure which i have to probably try to do something here coracohumeral ligament release i then took a traction stretch on the comma sign kept the traction on kept on releasing between the glenoid and the subscap making sure i don't damage the biceps so that's the traction stretch on the sub on the comma sign that's the release between the glenoid and the subscap i medialized the footprint significantly by almost 8 mm so i am working as of now from the posterior portal but i am going to shift to the lateral viewing portal and work out of the box because that's the only way you can treat these sort of massive cuff tears massive subscap tears so that's the retrograde device coming in traction stitch there two anchors placed on the medial footprint all pass through from the inferior to superior i also took a fiber link kind of a traction stitch which i will load on to a knotless anchor to make sure that i have the best opportunity for the subscap to even tnod is there is fine as long as it heals there so that's the beginning of me tying out for the subscap uh, sutures now is the time for me to look at the biceps so that's the biceps i held it from the posterior portal with the kingfisher i asked my assistant to hold on to it and i started releasing the transverse humeral ligament so what's important now in the two articles that i mentioned is that i'll just take a moment here so in the static uh, dynamic uh, static stabilization of the biceps they have only released up to the level of the transverse humeral ligament they have slightly transferred the uh, biceps anteriorly they have decorticated the cortex they put anchors and fixed the tendon there however in the dynamic biceps rerouting they have gone all the way up to the upper 2 cm of the pec major aponeurosis released it all the way effectively got the biceps into the middle of the tuberosity so the biceps now is actually going to be like a supraspinatus it is going to be like a uh, humeral head depressor and they are actually created a groove a, a, a new uh, biceps groove and stabilized it with anchors anteriorly not necessarily through the biceps so what i have done here is a combination of the two techniques so i released the transverse humeral ligament 
I also released all the way up to the pec major aponeurosis because only then the significantly sublux biceps I'm going to be able to get it all the way to the middle of the tuberosity and you need to be very careful here because you can easily damage the biceps and then it's not going to work as a dynamic stabilizer. So that's the important thing that I wanted to show in this uh, slide. So I'm slowly able to get it into the middle of the tuberosity. You need to spend adequate amount of time to be able to do this. So once I was sure and it keeps going back because of the uh, tension on it and you can see it is significantly widened and thickened. That means this biceps was trying to compensate for the lack of humoral depressor function. So that's a good positive sign. There are two good positive signs here, the teres minor hypertrophy and the biceps hypertrophy. So that's the uh, LHB groove that you create. I then took a traction stitch and asked the assistant to hold on to the biceps and then I started putting about two to three anchors proximally at the cartilage humeral head junction. Before that, burr and create a new tuberosity like you saw on the image, like a new groove for the biceps. Placement of the anchors, one proximally near the cartilage bone junction and one distally near the edge of the tuberosity, multiple lasso loop lock stitches. There was no posterior, significant posterior cuff left, but I think one or two of the stitches I took through whatever I could take through the remnant cuff anteriorly and posteriorly. But mo most importantly, it was the biceps rerouting. So that's the second anchor coming in. So I took about four to five lasso loop stitches, all triple loaded anchors, because only then I was sure that this is going to actually stay there based on the amount of demand this lady puts on her shoulder. Extremely gratifying and in fact surprising results. I had not got her MRI done at that point of time. For the purpose of this uh, presentation, I made sure that we get an MRI done for her. This is the MRI of the patient. So you can see that the biceps is there, it stays there. The new groove is very well evident, the anchors are well placed. Very satisfying that the subscap has stayed there. The humeral head is showing adaptive changes. We know this is not the end of the story, but that's how these patients are. They are uh, in evolution of this particular disorders. Unfortunately, she's having symptoms on the opposite side now. So this is the presentation before I go for the question was taking from the stat static concept to make sure somewhere something works like a depressor. So I agree there is no dynamic effect completely. There is no static effect completely also. So anyways, uh, the key messages are if you have a weight bearing shoulder and if it's irreparable, it is extremely challenging. You need to think out of the box, have the tricks to repair the subscap, which I feel is the one of the most important things. If you see teres minor hypertrophy and an enlargement of the longer of the biceps, it's an encouraging sign. And this has worked in this particular patient that is con combination of dynamic and static rerouting. Thank you. Uh, thank you.